Hello, I'm John Casarda, talking to you from the University of North Carolina. And I have to say that I'd much rather be in Paris today with you, but another commitment precluded me from joining. The organizers thus asked if I might make some brief remarks via video on airport area development, focusing on primary drivers and outcomes to set the context for the sessions which will follow. Let me begin by noting that major airports in their nearby areas, like cities, are never static. They are in a continuous process of change. Planned or not, airports and their environs are transforming from places of departure to destinations where distant travelers and locals alike converge to work or otherwise conduct business, exchange knowledge, shop, eat, sleep, and be entertained, often without going more than 15 minutes from the airport. In the process, airport areas are quickly becoming regional and national assets, as well as airport assets. Properly planned and developed, they promote regional business efficiency and attractive, sustainable development, while generating additional passengers and cargo for the airport. The true engine for airport areas is not the airport per se, but its air routes. These routes operate as a physical internet, moving people, parts, and finished goods quickly and efficiently over long distances, analogous to the way the digital internet moves information and data. Airports are the routers of this physical internet, and as such have become business magnets and regional economic accelerators. As the physical internet evolves in breadth and depth, route development, airport commercial development, and regional business development are going hand in hand around the world. The Aerotropolis, the broader airport integrated economic region with an airport city at its core, coalesces these development processes spatially and functionally. Its spatial elements consist of aviation-oriented businesses and associated residential complexes that cluster near the airport and outward along connecting transportation corridors, generating observable form. Its functional elements include the spatial elements, as well as businesses and business people who may be widely dispersed throughout the metropolitan area or clustered at some points distant from the airport, but nonetheless are highly dependent on it for time-critical access to their global suppliers, customers, or enterprise partners. The Aerotropolis, in fact, is an urban manifestation of the local meeting the global, where many airport area businesses are more dependent on distant suppliers and customers than, are those, than on those in their own region. Its value proposition rests on its aviation connectivity and corresponding ability to move people and products over long distances. Connectivity itself is measured by the number of distant markets served times the frequency of air service to those markets, sometimes weighted by the size of these markets. The airport acts as the physical interface of the global and the local for many of today's high-value goods and business services. Among the most prominent of these interfaces are Amsterdam Schiphol, Chicago O'Hare, Dallas-Fort Worth, Dubai, Hong Kong, Incheon, Memphis, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, Singapore, and Washington Dulles International Airports. Each has attracted a remarkable number of businesses to their airport areas, generating huge economic returns to their regions. For example, more than 1,000 firms have located in the Amsterdam airport area, including the world headquarters of ABN AMRO and ING Banks, located less than 10 minutes from Schiphol's passenger terminal, in part because of the suburb connectivity this airport provides to their executives. Likewise, four Fortune 500 world headquarters are located in Las Colinas, Texas, only a short drive from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, while Chicago's O'Hare Airport area has more office and convention space than most major cities. A number of major airports also exceed many metropolitan downtown business districts in office space and employment. Rossi Pole, occupying 65 hectares in the middle of Paris Charles de Gaulle, has 230,000 square meters of offices. There are 700 firms based in Charles de Gaulle's 3,200 hectare property, employing a total of 87,000 people. Proceeding outwards, an additional 770,000 square meters of offices are located in the vicinity of the airport, along with many hotels and logistics facilities. Approximately 250,000 jobs in the Paris region are either directly or indirectly related to Charles de Gaulle. The Washington Dulles Airport region is the second largest retail market in the U.S., just behind New York City's Manhattan Island, and has become a high-tech business and consulting hub as well. 
Over 450,000 high-paying jobs have located along the Dulles Aerotropolis Corridor. Hong Kong, Incheon, Memphis, and Paris Charles de Gaulle boast leading cargo and logistics complexes, with the former two airports sustaining, respectively, Hong Kong Disneyland and New Songdo International Business District, an airport edge city the size of downtown Boston. Dubai and Singapore have emerged as full-fledged aerotropolises with their large leisure, tourism, commercial, and financial sectors dependent on aviation. Both may be legitimately described as global aviation hubs with city-states attached. The regional employment impact and industry mix of the aerotropolis is much greater than many realize. Research by Dr. Stephen Appold and me on employment around the 25 busiest U.S. passenger airports found that 3.1 million jobs as of 2009 were located within a 2.5 mile radius of these airports. That's 2.8 percent of total U.S. employment. However, over 7.5 million jobs were within a five mile distance. That's 6.8 percent of all U.S. employment. And fully 19 million jobs, 17.2 percent of the U.S. total, were within 10 miles of these 25 airports. Assessment of wages and salaries of these airport radii showed that the respective percentages from payrolls were 3.4, 8.2, and 21.9 percent. These percentages indicate that many jobs near major airports are relatively well paid. When we studied individual airports, we found that those located a greater distance from the metropolitan city center generated significant employment clusters of their own. Fostered by these clusters, Chicago O'Hare Airport has 450,000 jobs within a radius of just five miles. Dallas-Fort Worth, 395,000 jobs, and Washington Dulles, almost 240,000 jobs. Fully 9.3% of all U.S. employment in transportation and warehousing is located within 2.5 miles of the 25 largest airports in the U.S. The disproportionately high concentration of these jobs continued outward at least as far as a 10-mile radius from the airport fence. Even traditional downtown employment sectors, such as finance, insurance, and administration, are moving to airport areas. Our research comparing airport employment with metropolitan central business district area employment showed that zones within five miles of the airport register 55 percent of the total finance and insurance jobs that are located within five miles of the city center and 78 percent of the administrative and support jobs. Hotels, of course, are mushrooming around airports. There are 49 hotels within 2.5 miles of Atlanta's Hartfield-Jackson Airport, with the heaviest concentration just 1.0 and 1.5 miles away. That is 1 to, uh, 1 to 1.5 miles. This compares to 51 airports located 2.5 miles of Atlanta's city center. And the largest concentration of hotel rooms on the entire U.S. West Coast is adjacent to the fence of Los Angeles International Airport. Many larger airport hotels, such as the Sheraton at Amsterdam Schiphol, DFW's Grand Hyatt, and Frankfurt's Hilton, have become virtual corporate headquarters. Executives and board members from across the country or the region fly in for sales meetings, client contacts, high-level decision-making at these hotels. Airport areas are also attracting businesses in the full range of professional, medical, life sciences, and information and communication functions. Sports, recreation, entertainment complexes, as well as showrooms, exhibition, and convention centers are gravitating to them as well. A spatially compressed model of the Aerotropolis depicting its main components is shown here. No Aerotropolis will look exactly like this illustration, but most will eventually take on similar features, led by newer greenfield airports less constrained by prior decades of non-aviation-oriented surrounding development. The Aerotropolis is thus much more a dynamic, forward-looking concept than a static, cross-sectional model where much surrounding development often reflects historic airport area growth over many prior decades, some of this in the distant past. Future development of the Aerotropolis will be fueled by further global integration and the need for speedy connectivity. Both will be enabled and catalyzed by the continuing expansion of aviation routes operating as a physical internet, moving people and products quickly over great distances, with airports serving as the key nodes or routers of this high-speed physical internet Greater prosperity will be gained by those metropolitan regions and nations who understand and leverage the competitive advantages that aviation airports bring in the 21st century. China, India, South Korea, and most other Asian nations clearly recognize this 
and are investing heavily in their airports and aerotropolises as competitive tools for 21st century global trade and commerce. So are nations in the Middle East. Many of their airports are far more modern and attractive and efficient than those in the West where aviation infrastructure often lacks. For example, the World Economic Forum ranks the quality of U.S. aviation infrastructure as 31st in the world, tied with Thailand and behind such nations as Malaysia, Panama, and South Africa. Two years ago, the U.S. targeted $2 billion U.S. dollars to its airports as part of the President's $50 billion U.S. infrastructure stimulus plan. At the same time, China announced plans to invest nearly $240 billion U.S. in its aviation sector during the following five years, including 56 new commercial airports. India is building 20 new airports and modernizing 58 others. The Middle East is experiencing a similar airport infrastructure boom, currently investing some U.S. $104 billion. Asia and the Middle East actually take a strategically and philosophically different view of their airports and airport areas compared to the U.S. and Europe. While Asia and the Middle East treat their airports as primary infrastructure assets to compete in the 21st century, the U.S. and Europe all too often treat them as nuisances and environmental threats to be controlled. Not that there aren't problems that need to be addressed with major airports and their surrounding areas, including noise, congestion, environmental, safety, and capacity issues. But the critical importance of airports for 21st century competitiveness and urban prosperity must be better explained, publicized, and appreciated. Generating that balance through dialogue and knowledge exchange of your international seminar on sustainable airport areas is a critically important objective. Wishing you all the best for this balanced dialogue and knowledge transfer as you interact over the coming two days. Thanks and goodbye from Chapel Hill.